Here we have some of the classic cars brought to us from the North Iowa Vintage Automobile Club. I don't think I got that right. It wasn't. Most of these cars are from the late 20s and early 30s, which is exactly the era that we're talking about. There's one of these cars that goes back as far as 1917 being driven around. You can probably spot that one. After the performance, you can walk over there where they will be parked and uh, check them out more closely. So, is there only one person that's the other guy? And that other guy. So, No. River City Festival. We're glad you could all be here. On Tuesday, March 13th, 1934, a group of some of the most notorious outlaws in the country arrived here at Mason City's First National Bank. 
The gang included such desperate, hardened criminals as John Red Hamilton, George Babyface Nelson, Eddie Green, Tommy Carroll, Homer Van Meter, John Dillinger, and a seventh unidentified gang member thought to be either Joseph Burns or Red Forsythe. There are conflicting reports as to some of the exact details of what happened that day. Some witnesses even stated that a woman was behind the wheel of the getaway car. The gang arrived at the bank shortly before closing time, intending to steal some $240,000, an amount that today would be worth more than $4 million. Today we are going to show you a theatrical recreation of the crime based on actual written and eyewitness accounts. For the safety of the audience and the participants, we ask that you please stay off the road and behind the barriers as there will be cars driving and automatic weapons spraying hot brass. Thank you. The gangsters entered the bank shouting profane orders and shooting their guns into the ceilings and walls, considered by most a very effective scare tactic. W.C. Bagley, the bank president, thought that a maniac had broken in with a gun. He ran into his office and barely managed to slam his door on one of the robber's pistols. Guard Walters was in his elevated bulletproof observation booth built into the wall near the front entrance. He followed procedure and fired a tear gas cartridge, which hit one of the robbers in the back. But then the tear gas gun jammed and Walters was out of the fight. One of the gang members sprayed the bulletproof glass with gunfire, shattering it, but missing Walters. A piece of that bulletproof glass can be seen in the lobby of the police station. While one or two of the gangsters cleaned out the teller's cash drawers, another, probably John Hamilton, took bank cashier Harry Fisher to the vault. As assistant, Harry was one of the few bank employees...
on that. four miles south of Mason City. Police later said the bandits had two other cars waiting for them. Though the gang made off with more than 52,000